So we oftentimes know about our research networks from a post-secondary educational institution type of, of establishment or from our teaching hospitals, but what we oftentimes miss is what they're doing to impact our broader communities and to help with our economic development propositions to help grow our small businesses. And really, the network connectivity piece, albeit the thing that we oftentimes refer to Orion and Canary about, it's the programs that they're running over this network that are really impacting every facet of our lives. So I'm very pleased today to have a, a great panel with us. I have Jim Roche, who's the president and CEO of Canary. I have Dr. Darren Graham, the president and CEO of Orion, the Ontario Research and Innovation Optical Network, and David Weymouth, who is the president of Optelian Networks. So to get us started, I've asked Jim to provide the landscape about Canary and what the current programs and so on are that they are offering. So Jim, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. Well, actually, good, morning. good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you heard, I'm the president and CEO of Canary. Uh, how many of you have heard about Canary? How many of you know what Canary does? Okay, so about half of the audience or so. So I, I won't spend too much time talking about that, but I do want to provide you with a bit of context about what Canary does and why we do it. Canary was formed about 20 years ago as a publicly funded organization to help create the internet principally for researchers. It's an extremely high bandwidth network that we manage across Canada. The connectivity to the researchers in universities and government labs is provided by our provincial partners um, companies like Orion in Ontario, BCNet, you heard from Mike earlier this morning in BC, Siberia, you heard from Robin this morning as well in Alberta, as well as another six ORANs across the country and in the territories. This ultra high speed network exists because researchers are doing things that require bandwidth beyond what we can deliver with the commercial internet. So, to give you an example of that, we sequence a genome. It's a huge amount of data. It's hundreds of gigabytes of data. Now I want to transfer that sequence to one of my colleagues, perhaps in France or Germany or Japan, or perhaps next door. Somehow I've got to move it. If you think about it, this is like moving 50 movies in one fell swoop. The commercial internet doesn't have the capacity to carry that bandwidth. So how do we do it? We create a private network. That's what Canary plus the regional networks is. It's an ultra high speed network to allow for the collaboration of researchers in Canada with themselves and internationally. But as we've been hearing this morning and this afternoon, the network alone is inadequate. It's just a network. It's just bits. It doesn't really do anything. On top of that network, you have to deliver services to allow the researchers to actually use it. Uh, historically, researchers who have been involved in the hard sciences tended to have the expertise to use this very high performance network. They knew how to write code. They knew how to configure routers. They knew what a router was. More and more, though, researchers don't have that expertise. Well, let me rephrase that. It's actually a different group of researchers who want to avail themselves of this high-speed network. So historically, it was the physical scientists. Now it's those researchers as well as the social scientists and the healthcare researchers, as I mentioned a minute ago. So Canary is providing the network, and we're also funding the development of software to allow the researchers to access the network. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. I think we're all familiar with the World Wide Web and browsers, obviously. You probably know that that came out of, that innovation came out of research at CERN and the High Energy Particle Physics Community in the Large Hadron Collider. That was a research initiative where one of those researchers found a way to collaborate with his colleagues more effectively using software that leveraged the capability of the network. That's just one example. It happened to be an incredibly powerful and influential example, but there are many others. I'll give you another one, just quickly. Ocean research. So Canada is at the forefront of ocean research. There's an organization called Ocean Networks Canada. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, there are two networks, Venus and Neptune. These networks exist on the uh, west coast of Canada. There are nodes on the sea floor. The two networks, one is shallow, the other is deep ocean. Those nodes are networked with high-capacity 
op fiber optic cable and power. They have uh, in each of the nodes a number of sensors, and these sensors are transmitting a ton of information across the networks back to ONC, Ocean Networks Canada headquarters. What do the ocean scientists do with all of this data? They want to collect it. They want to store it. They want to be able to access it over time. They want to be able to share it with their colleagues internationally. But then they want to analyze it. They want to visualize it. They want to draw conclusions from it. We funded the software to do the storage, the analysis, and the visualization of that data. That turns out to be a common problem. You heard Robin talk earlier about, about environmental monitoring in Alberta. It's exactly the same problem. You have a bunch of sensors all over the place that are spitting out a ton of data. You're collecting it, you analyze it, you visualize it. That leads to, as Robin said, policy conclusions. But the infrastructure to do this is beyond most researchers. Well, maybe it's not beyond their abilities, but it's certainly beyond their desire. We would prefer to have the researchers focus on their area of expertise, not on developing digital infrastructure. So Canary develops this digital infrastructure to allow people to use the ultra-high capacity network. This gives us an economic benefit, by the way. This software that I described at Ocean Networks Canada is now being licensed worldwide because it happens that, as you can imagine, offshore drilling, um, it's a risky endeavor from the point of view of environmental impact. And there's certainly a benefit to being able to monitor what's happening in those drill rigs. It's exactly the same problem. Lots of sensors generating a lot of data that you want to collect over time, analyze, and visualize. And so we're licensing that software to offshore drilling companies and helping create an ecosystem in Canada of excellent ocean research driven from this infrastructure. So that's the second element of what Canary is involved in. We have this high-capacity network delivered in partnership with our provincial partners. We also fund software to allow researchers to use the network. But then it goes a step further. Thinking about Ocean Networks Canada, we stimulated, as I said, an economic ecosystem. We've created something of value for Canada. We've helped stimulate SMEs, small and medium-sized companies, to be successful on an international scale. So we, we thought, how could we do more of that? And the conclusion that we came to, the answer that we came up with was, you heard, again, Robin presented it earlier, the idea of utility computing for small and medium-sized companies. And our thinking here was, we have this massive network. What if we put massive compute capability on the network, and we gave this massive compute capability, we made this accessible to small and medium-sized companies around Canada for free. What could they do? Well, we've, we've seen what happens when you put a massive bandwidth in front of a research community. They do amazing things with it. And what we're seeing now with this cloud computing resource that we've built in Canada and made available for free to small and medium-sized companies in Canada, what we've seen is they do amazing things with it. And it gives them a competitive advantage internationally. It's making Canadian companies stronger, allowing them to get to market faster with better products. We know that Canada's ICT sector is struggling. And we wanted to do something to light a fire under our ICT sector. We leveraged the existing infrastructure at Canary in partnership with Compute Canada and Cybera to do that. So, in conclusion, the three things that we're involved in, one, the core network in support of research and education across the country, massive bandwidth that you can't get out of the commercial internet. Two, software on tools on top of the network to allow the researchers who don't necessarily have the skills to use the network and the underlying compute capability to use it to advance their research. And three, cloud computing capability, massive compute capability for free for small and medium-sized companies to give them a competitive advantage worldwide. That's what Canary is doing. Thanks.